Good evening, you may be seated. I'm gonna get a little closer so you can hear me. Hi, I'm Pastor Susie, and I just want to welcome you on behalf of Our Savior's Lutheran Church. So glad that you could join us tonight. I hope that you can take a moment and take a deep breath. Let your shoulders sag a little bit, slip into your pew, and let the worries and concerns of your day, just put them on the shelf temporarily, and just sit back and enjoy all that this evening has to offer. I wanted to um, let you know that uh, we're going to go a little old school tonight. So for the congregational hymns, pull out the uh, Cranberry Hymnal, and you will find the words that you need in there. Um, let me start us with a blessing for the evening. There is an ancient refrain, an invitation to come and see. And whether the call sounds like a dare or a directive, it does not really matter. Come and see the flames dancing on your neighbor's face. Come and see little children squirming and curious, hearts wide open to magic and mystery. Come and see the wax melting down your fingertips, giving itself away to the light, the warmth, and the changes. Come and see a room filled with hope and love that catches up and keeps us tonight and every night, now until the end of time. Amen. A reading from Luke chapter 2. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria and all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Keeping watch over their flock by night, and an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining it is the night of the dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul fell its word a three Rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh, hear the angel voices, 
how I'm going to do it this year. Christmas is so expensive, and I just don't want the kids to be disappointed. I don't know why we even bother. All four of us Lord, I miss him so much, and it's so hard without him here. Please be with us this Christmas. I can't believe Mom's going to make us decorate the tree again. Yeah, I hate when she asks us to help. We're home. <coughs> Becky's getting a new cell phone for Christmas. Why can't I get a cell phone? Yeah, so you can talk all the time. Like, anybody wants to hear you more than they already do. Hey, be nice. Christmas is just around the corner. And I'm sorry, but I just don't think you're quite ready for a cell phone yet. Now, will you two come help me decorate this Christmas tree? Yes, Mom. Fine.
Lord, I just don't know what I'm going to do. I can't afford the kind of gifts their friends are getting this Christmas. Please give me your wisdom. My favorite decoration. What? The statues in barn? It's called the major scene. Come, have a seat. Let me tell you a story. We can finish decorating the Christmas tree later. Here, grab these pieces. There once was a young lady named Mary who was very excited to be marrying a nice man named Joseph. Mary was visited by an angel who told her she would marry this or she would carry the Son of God, Jesus. Mary was very concerned as to what Joseph would say, but God had that taken care of.
God, I thought Mary was a follower of you, but she's pregnant. Where have I gone wrong? Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because of what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you will give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. So, God sent an angel to Joseph to let him know that Mary was telling the truth? Exactly. Joseph had gotten so upset that he was not going to take Mary as his wife until the angel spoke to him. When he woke up, he knew that Mary was telling the truth about her pregnancy and the angel, and he knew that Mary was to be his wife. So they didn't even have a hospital to have the baby yet, or even a house? Joseph had a home and worked as a carpenter, but they had to travel to be counted in a registry in the town of Bethlehem at a certain time. And that happened to be right at the time when Mary was about to have the baby, the child of God. Because many people had to travel to Bethlehem at that time, when they arrived, there was no place to stay. One innkeeper finally let them take shelter in a barn. That's why the manger scene is so special that's where the Son of God was born. That's pretty cool. So the birth happened just like the birth happened just like the prophet described it. Duh. If God said it would happen, of course it would. your baby boy would one day walk on water Mary did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters did you know that your baby boy has come to make you this child that you've delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy gives sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand? Your baby boy has walked where angels draw. When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Ooh, Mary, did you know?
At this time, we will receive our offering for the evening, and I would like you to know that your generous contributions will go towards two organizations tonight, one towards the um, music ministries here at Our Saviors, and also to the Centennial Area Food Shelf. Thank you. Let us join together in prayer to give thanks for this offering. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and the gifts that we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Luke chapter 2. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived.
Mom, the story of Jesus is a sweet story, but why do we still celebrate it all these years later? Now Christmas is only about presents and stocking stuffers. At least that's what the commercials say. Kids, Christmas is special because the birth of Jesus shows us how much God loves us. Without Jesus, we could never do enough or be good enough to go to heaven when we die. Before Jesus was born, the Jewish people tried to earn God's forgiveness by following a strict set of rules and by making sacrifices. However, these were just symbols of what God would do later by sending Jesus to earth. God's people knew that someday a Messiah was coming because it was predicted in the scriptures thousands of years before his birth.
I prophesy in the Old Testament book of Isaiah. I say, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He was despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed.
That's pretty cool. The birth happened just like the prophet described it. Duh. If God said it would happen, of course it would. Now, let me finish telling you about the birth so you will remember the true message of Christmas. God loves us and wants us to love him because he has so many blessings he wants to share with us. Because of our sin, there is no way we can go to heaven or even have a life of peace on our own. God is holy and sin cannot be in his presence. That's where the problem is for us. We are sinful. So God made a way for us. He sent his son to earth in the form of a human to take the punishment for our sins. Jesus lived like a man so we can relate to him and learn from his example. As an adult, he took the punishment for our sins by dying on the cross. And when he did this, he fulfilled the promise God had made thousands of years before. That's why Christmas is so special. When God came to earth as a baby, hope became a reality for us. Christmas is about God's love, hope, and the peace that comes from knowing Jesus.
close us in prayer. Lord, we give thanks for the talents and the ways that we are able to use our gifts to praise you and to bring glory to your name. In this season of Advent, be with us as we ponder the gifts of peace and joy and love, and, um, and as we look forward to your future coming. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I have just a couple of announcements for us this evening. On your way out, you still have until 7.20 to participate in the silent auction. So if you want to get that last bid in, now is your time to do it. <laughs> We also uh, would like to um, welcome you to stay for cookies and fellowship in our Luther Hall over by the uh, double doors there. Um, we want to recognize the musicians who made all this work come together for this evening. I'd also like to give thanks to those who are unsung heroes in the back with our sound and our AV tech. <laughs> to our actors this evening. And to our choirs, the bell choir, the chancel singers, and the jam singers. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Please rise as you are able, and we will send, uh, send you off with our song, Joy to the World.